I was a trustee from 69 to 76, uh, the book says. And that was when, when there was no college and nobody expected there to be a college. When Whatcom was first founded in the 70s, there was an opposition to it because the county felt, what do we need another college here? What do we need another school? We have a vocational school, we have a university. Why do we need a community college? Turns out that there were a number of studies done that showed there was a need. There were a bunch of people who moved into Ferndale because of the job with the first refinery that we had. And a lot of those people would have liked to go to some educational institution. And many of them weren't qualified to go to Western. And so we found a, a niche there that people who just wanted to, to better their understanding of the world maybe, uh, you know, hobbies. So when we started looking and turning over rocks and things to find something to do, we found quite a bit. The college was started uh, by a lot of uh, visionary community members. Uh, Whatcom Community College started in the parking lot at Ferndale High School and sort of branched out into other elements of the community. We had liquor stores, uh, an abandoned grocery store on Marine Drive and a number of other venues around the county. And we were uh, proverbially known at the time as a college without walls. Sam Kelly had sent me a wonderful article that he had written called A College Without Walls. And it was very impressive and it suggested that you could start a college without um, bricks and mortar. Watkin began as an idea, as a concept, without a building, but we began with a, a commitment and an, an ideal to what education could be. And we didn't care whether we had the building, we didn't care whether we had the place, we had, we had the drive, we had the inspiration. Everett didn't want to be president, he, he didn't have a doctorate, but he would help them set it up. Mm -hmm. And he enjoyed that job with the community college. He told me better than any he'd ever had. We didn't have any classes, actually, until, I believe, 1970. And one of the first classes was a program in farm management. I already knew uh, Floyd Sandell, who had a farm management class of his own. And it was run by the Bellingham School District, or under its aegis at any rate. And so he was willing, and we got him to be our very first class. And then we expanded and became the, uh, had the academic program that I was, I was part of in that fall of 1971. Early on, we were a college without a campus, and we had rental facilities like this one I mentioned, my first class in Ferndale High School. And that continued, we did get some centers. There was a Linden Center, and there was Broadway downtown, and there was, we had our first administrative offices in Third Street in Ferndale. It was interesting, it was a building right next, a rental facility right next to the liquor store, which some might have found handy, I have no idea. But then we also expanded to add a, a supplementary administrative facility in a grain store. When we began, in terms of curriculum in particular, you know, there was limited number of students, limited number of faculty. So the way that it grew was people just having ideas. One of the things that I don't think people know much about in terms of Whatcom was how extraordinarily innovative it was. It was the first community college without walls in the country. I worked with the alternative learning program and my job description was very short, never say no to students. Anything, anything a student wanted to learn, um, they could come to me and I would work with them to design an independent study learning contract. We were winging it, basically, in 1975. And again, you just kind of figured it out on the fly. When Bill Laidlaw became president, it became a more formal institution, which it needed to be. And we um, had more rules to follow and we needed to look professional. And it was time for that. And then we started getting our campus. 
at the time, the students would um, enter into um, uh, courses needed for graduation, but they would have to take the course in Marine Drive one night and, and then a couple of nights later over in Linden and then a couple of nights later over in Blaine and then repeat the cycle, which was an inhibition to a number of students who um, were struggling financially and denied them access to the kind of level of quality of education that we wanted them to possess and to be able to earn through accessibility. And since that couldn't happen, the ultimate decision became clear that we needed to actually possess walls. I believe it was in 1987 we had our first sort of campus, and that was right here. Uh, we had just a couple of buildings. The first year we were not allowed to call this a campus. This was a facility, a center. And so we tried to think of ways of um, supporting students at the center. And so it became very clear to me that we needed to have um, videos. And again, at the time, it wasn't a standard procedure to have textbooks with videos. This was the 1980s, early 1990s. And so I uh, started looking for grants, found some, and we actually started to videotape um, lectures. And then those videotapes were put on reserve in what was called the Learning Resource Center, which now is known as our library. One of the interesting things I remember from that, aside from the physical growth, is that we went from being the oldest average age student when we were a college without walls to the youngest in the state of any of the community colleges in average age. Obviously, older students will take education anywhere and any way they can get it. Younger students seem to like the idea of a traditional campus before they would show up in big numbers. Harold had a vision as to what he wanted this school to look like. He wanted this campus. He built these buildings, found the funds for these buildings, which was no easy task. I and mean, I don't think any of the administration or instructors could do here what we do now at Whatcom without the foresight and the forethought of what they did. I would like to thank them for letting me stand on their shoulders. Sam later was one of the most supportive people for the campus that was eventually built. And there is a, a building named for him. When I came to Whatcom, there were three buildings on this campus. And most of us were located in Laidlaw. And there was still this pioneering spirit among the employees at Whatcom. Staff and faculty had this strong bond and times were tough because there were tiny budgets because most of the money was going towards building this beautiful campus. When I was the, the dean and Bill Christopher was the dean of, of the academic side, we would have budget conversations and we worked very well together. But the point of it was that he was, we were always of course needing more money and so he would be um, negotiating to get like science equipment and I'd be negotiating for academic advisors and it would often we would often find we didn't get either of those. What we got was a lawnmower, you know, a big lawnmower, because the administrative side wanted that. And the point of this is that um, we were often trying to figure out where are we with a campus, because a lawnmower was not a high priority for some of us. I know that sounds like a strange thing, but it was, we, we bump along trying to figure out where are our values, what do we surface as highest priorities. You can't do everything. You don't have money for everything. And the board did tend in the beginning uh, to favor the infrastructure, the bricks and mortar and land. But it, 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 it moved slowly over the years to try to deal with the question of part-time teachers, of which there were very, very, very many. But uh, it changed, and it's, it's no longer that way. At that time, we were you know, told we had to shrink our program if we were going to survive, and we cut it in half. Um, so instead of just teaching one session at a school, there might be three sessions at the school, and I might teach one, Regina would teach one, somebody else would teach one, I took over all three sessions but got paid for one. But it was either agree to that 
or the program had to be eliminated. And, and luckily, all of us, it was a job to supplement. We did it because we loved it, because it was our passion, not because we were supporting our family. It probably been a very different story if that had been the case. I think what's happened over the years was because of the work of faculty, of staff, of administration, uh, Wacom has a role um, between the technical schools and the universities, and it's established itself. We um, now have a very strong cyber program, uh, we have a very strong mathematics program, science program, a thriving international program that students can come and learn about America. So I think Wacom has established itself, but more importantly, I think that the community has come to learn the role that Wacom plays in supporting uh, Whatcom County in the state of Washington. We have some of the most, you know, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge kinds of programs. The, the cybersecurity program is a fabulous response to the changing technology age that we live in and the, the, really the, the problems it presents to businesses as well as us as individual citizens. Those kinds of things are, are wonderful. The health sciences, my gosh, the, the tremendous health services available in our county and throughout the state that really require capable people who are on top of the game all the time, who know everything that's happening because medicine is changing so quickly. Uh, these are really important programs and people sort of know, but they're usually surprised to find out more the detail of, of what's available here. I think there is more diversity, and part of that has to do with our international students have grown so much. Um, but I also think they're, we're trying to reach out to maybe minorities who are first generation um, coming to school. And I, and I also, what I love about that is that the college seems really prepared to help them succeed. And that, I think, is primary. Because you don't want to uh, bring people in who are already maybe um, hesitant or fearful um, and then let them just flounder. And I see the college doing a lot to keep, um, keep them on track and to um, help them succeed. And that's really what it's all about. I do know that thanks to the foresight of Harold Heiner and the Board of Trustees, they acquired land while it was available, and there's still land available, so that if, as, and when the college needs to build out further, it can be done. And that is real foresight, I think. I really see the college thriving even more, growing in terms of student numbers, but also a growing presence in the community and in the region. As it relates to buildings and grounds, we are looking on getting financing for our Phyllis and Charles Self-Learning Commons, which will be a central focus of all student activity on campus. Really be exciting. It will be a facility that I'm sure will be accessed by the neighborhood as well. The trustees and I are looking at the feasibility of providing residence hall for our students because uh, we have a number of international students. We have strong athletic teams that bring about students from around the country. But we also have, because of our signature programs, attracted students from around Washington State that basically come to Whatcom because they want to study, for example, in cybersecurity or in one of our health areas as well as those students who really see us as very successful in being able to promote our students' success and, and uh, further studies into the University of Washington, Western Washington University, and any one of the regional universities. I would like to see us really keep an eye on what's happening in Whatcom County and in the area to be sure that we're responsive to some workforce needs. I see us becoming uh, more, uh, perhaps more in tune with what's happening in the technology industry, some of the manufacturing industry, and certainly in going back perhaps to, to our roots and looking at the needs of the agricultural community in this area. Um, I can see, I'm hoping that we grow, that we can attract and, and hire more faculty and staff to be able to support the growing numbers of students that we have. And I think we'll continue to 
uh, really pride ourselves on our excellence and see ourselves as models of teaching and learning and providing models of economic development in partnership with business and industry, uh, not just regionally but nationally. When I walk across campus now, I'm just, it, it's like Watcom is a grown up now, it's mature. It's all together as compared to when we were beginning, it was more almost like children playing, trying to create things. And the maturity gives it uh, a, a reputation and an, an, an awareness in the community that is, I think, extraordinarily positive. We never know what tomorrow is really going to be like, much less 15 years from now. But a college that wants to address things as they change, to make sure that we're producing students that are ready to tackle the problems of today and tomorrow, this is really a, a quality factor in Whatcom's evolution and I think one of the things that we really celebrate in its 50th anniversary.